What up, guys? You know we are still rethinking Bitcoin. And for those of you guys that follow me, know that I am all about education, understanding how systems work to see if they're stable or not, and also developing systems. So we're making some updates to the payout percentage on these yield generating Bitcoin wallets. And we're about to break down exactly why, what this means for you and how it's going to be beneficial to you and the system as a whole. Let's get into it. What up, guys? You know that we are always rethinking Bitcoin and how to use it to increase our wealth. And in this video, guys, I'm going to share with you a manual change that's being made to the platform and its payout. So currently, as of today, April the 2nd, and up until today, it's been paying out 15% on all deposits. So this is going to change, all right? I am going to make a manual change to decrease this percentage from 15% to 8%. And in this video, I am going to explain exactly why and how that's going to benefit the ecosystem itself and benefit all participants in the ecosystem. Trust me, guys, I know when you look at numbers like this and be like, oh, there's a decrease, that means it's bad. On the contrary, this decrease is necessary because the feedback and the transactions and the growth is actually a good thing. And you guys are going to see in this video how dropping this percentage to 8% is going to be greatly beneficial to everybody in the ecosystem however you use the system whether you are buying and buying up the credits or selling credits or just making deposits this video is going to clarify how it's going to be beneficial to you now some of you guys that watch my channel you're going to see this video before i actually make that update i'm going to make that update on uh, wednesday wednesday the third of april and an email notification will be sent out to all existing users. So you'll receive a link in your email to forward you to this. So by that time, this will already be at 8%. <clears throat> but for those of you guys that follow my channel, uh, you'll get a heads up. So if you wanted to uh, throw in some last deposits every now and then, you know, throughout the day or whatever the case is, you guys can feel free to do so and finish up taking advantage of that 15% payout before it goes to 8%. All right. So with that said, I'm sending this out. And everybody's going to get an email, right? However, this is a question I want to ask you guys. When the system does automated updates, would you like to be notified? Should I include a notification so when you come in, log into your account or whatever the case is, go to settings, your notifications. Should I add another link here to say, notify me whenever there's a change to the percentage? Because keep in mind, guys, you might not be aware of this because I have not talked to it in detail. But in the Medium article that I posted, I gave a quick reference here saying that the wallet software is equipped with an auto evaluation mechanism that increases its payout percentage upon achievement of system goals. We're going to get into this a little bit more so you guys can have some clarity and understanding about this. But what this auto evaluation mechanism does is that it assesses the performance of the system in any given 30 day period. And based on the performance, it will either increase the percentage, the payout percentage by 
leave it the same or decrease it. So it can increase it like right now, the payout percentage is at 15%. Well, the auto evaluation mechanism will either decrease that, leave it the same or increase it, okay? Based on the performance. And this is a mechanism to help ensure the sustainability of the platform. And this is an automated feature. So the system itself will monitor and do that. However, in this video, I'm releasing this to everyone because I am doing a manual update. And again, I'm going to show you why. So you guys, please leave a message in the comments. Let me know if that's something I should add or not. If you're really not interested in knowing about small changes in the percentage from 15 percent to 14 or, or 14 to 15, uh, that won't be necessary. But if you want to have an option to determine whether you receive a notification on that or not, please feel free to leave a comment in the section and let me know if that's something that should be added here. All right. So let's jump into some meat of things. And, and the system is doing good, guys. It's doing great. I just got a, a comment three hours ago. Uh, this is a video I posted three weeks ago and got a comment three hours ago on it, which is quite interesting because old videos typically fall off the map. Uh, but he said he's loving it so far, growing his capital at a crazy rate, just getting marketplace discounts. And the marketplace is key, people. It is very key. If you are not a partaker in the marketplace, I do encourage you to actually get out there. You don't have to. You can still grow your Bitcoin just by putting it in, putting deposits in and allowing that those uh, credits convert into Bitcoin. So you're still good in that aspect, but you can really significantly grow it by engaging in the marketplace. All right, guys, let's get into why this update is being made uh, to bring a bit more clarity in. But before I get into that, I want you guys to also understand that the 15 percent that you pay is out that pays out here. All you guys that are already in the system know and understand that that's not 15 percent APY. That's 15 percent on your deposit. Right. Which is going to yield that return for you well within a year in most cases, okay? So especially for smaller deposits. So uh, when that drops to 8%, you can imagine that that will kick out still close to 100% or doubling whatever your deposit in is within a year. <clears throat> Again, based on your deposit and how you use the system, and it could triple that, uh, quadruple that even, depending on how you use the system. All right, so let's jump into this. I created an Excel spreadsheet, kind of give you guys an overall layout and understanding of where we are. So I've had questions in the comments and some people have suggested, well, with greater adoption comes greater uh, revenue for the system. Well, that's true to a certain degree, but they were thinking also that as more money comes in, it gives greater payouts. And I was clarifying that it's not necessarily the amount, but there is something to consider called the balance to obligations ratio, because all of the fees that come into the system go into the vault, which is used to pay out these obligations, which are these credits that are issued for all online or on chain deposits, right? So I want to share some information with you guys and show what's happened over the past 30 days. So we've been um, close to 30 days on the third. It will be 30 days that the system has been live. And I'm going to show you guys some stats of what we're looking at. So over the course of this month, the month of March. 92 percent of the revenue that the vault has received has come from the deposit fees. That is a normal concept. All right. So that's taking 10 percent on every single on chain deposit that comes into the system. OK, and this is being used again to pay out those credits, convert them to Bitcoin. Six percent has come from the marketplace fees. So you guys are act actually getting out there, engaging in the marketplace. And that is a fairly good number. And of course, transaction fees are fairly low. 
uh, about a pound every time you send out a transaction, uh, withdraw out the system or even within the system. That's a one pound fee that the system gets. And that's pretty low. Nevertheless, this is what we're looking at right now. And because so many or such a high percentage is coming from deposit fees as opposed to a higher percentage coming from marketplace fees, this change in dropping from 15% to 8% is going to be that much more apparent and understandable, understanding that the current rate or percentage of income is coming from the deposit fees. All right. So let's get look into the marketplace. OK. So what we are looking at here is an example on how marketplace, the marketplace sellers engage. OK, because we know how the buyers engage. We have a mindset to go in. Hey, I can purchase Bitcoin at a discount by getting and acquiring these credits. And we do that very actively. However, sellers of the platform or the DGNs or the ones that want to get in, make a profit and get out real quick. They're the ones that are taking Bitcoin, buying or depositing Bitcoin into the system, taking those credits, cashing in those credits at a disc uh, and selling them at a discount. And buyers get to benefit, but sellers also get to benefit as well. Now, let's use this example here. So in this example, I've listed this is how much someone would deposit. This is the deposit fee that they would pay by depositing that amount and that calculation right there. OK, based on the earnings. So it's going to take that 15 percent. And uh, well, that 15 percent is considered here. So all this is always 10 percent of whatever the deposit is. So that calculation right there is 10 percent. You have the credits issue, which is based on the earnings. OK. And you have the infamous 25 percent discount, which we all have periodically seen over the course of the month where people are actually selling their credits at a 25 percent discount. That is huge, guys. Some of you ain't respecting the credit, so we got to start respecting the credit. But this is a good thing. You know, I'm not saying this is bad. This is actually good because it benefits everyone, buyer and seller. OK, wonderful thing about the system. All right. And this shows the net profit. This right here shows the balance to obligations ratio, which we'll get into in a little bit. All right. So let's understand these numbers and explain it a little bit. OK, so. In the credits issued, this number here is going to be based on whatever the earnings are. So currently the system is paying out 15 percent. This is going to drop to 8 percent. OK. And therefore, this number is going to change. The number of credits that are issued will change. This direct right, directs us back to the concept of the deposit fees being 92 percent of the revenue. Now, the system will only issue credits on those on chain deposits. Right. And because this is so high, the system is going to now reduce the amount of credits issued. All right. What does this mean for the seller? Well, the sellers can still benefit from the system. The only thing is that they would have to increase the amount of deposit in order to acquire the same profit at any given time, or they would have to do this multiple times in order to receive the same profit. OK, that's the difference that this is going to make. And in this example here, I am only using that 25 percent because that has been somewhat of the max. I think Drip Coach dropped a 50 percent discount one time, but that's a, a one off that he was just testing. But on average, they're lower than this. You'll find discounts lower than this. But every now and then, a 25 percent discount will creep in and get bought up fairly quickly. OK, understandably so. Uh, and this right here shows the net profit. So if I was to go out 
deposit a thousand dollars, take out nine hundred. I paid a a hundred dollar fee, right? I'm issued two hundred fifty dollars in credits, and if I choose to sell those credits at a twenty five percent discount. That means I'm actually putting it on the marketplace at a 35% discount, which is here. So that means I will, the discount is 35%, so I'll be earning 65%. So that's where this number comes in. So if I put those credits out there right now, I can get them out there, <clears throat> sell them all within maybe an hour or two, walk away with $62 in profit. That's on a thousand dollar investment and that's not even a thousand dollar investment that's really off of a one hundred dollar investment because remember guys you can put in a thousand you can take out nine hundred and you you have only paid a fee of a hundred all right so when we deduct the earnings from that 25 percent discount from that 100 we're left with a 62 dollar and 50 cent profit okay just that quick within an hour or two and we can rinse cycle and repeat this process do that as many times as we want to okay you guys follow me so far and that's at a 15 percent discount where it is now i also want to bring your attention to this ratio this is the balance to obligations ratio meaning whatever the vault balance has in bitcoin from these transaction fees compared to the current obligations. So if someone deposits $1,000, they pay a $100 fee, they're issued $250 in credits. This is an obligation, okay? The credits are nothing but an obligation. And that would yield a ratio of 40%, okay? The higher this number is, the faster credit to Bitcoin conversions are being made, okay? The lower this number is, the slower that rate is, all right? And there are some other aspects of this that we'll get into shortly. Now what I'm gonna do, now that you understand these numbers and why they're here, I am gonna copy this, paste it here, and we're gonna change the numbers a bit. So we're gonna take it from 15% to 8%. So I'm gonna put in 8% here, and let's notice how these numbers change, okay? What's happened here? On the same $1,000 deposit, the depositor will now be issued $180 in credits as opposed to $250 in credits, okay? Not still not a bad deal because you're getting an additional 8% on your deposit, right? But for those guys that are in the marketplace that want to sell, you can still do so. Because on a situation like this, and we're just using this same $1,000 deposit, you can still sell all of your credits. And keep in mind, guys, you don't have to sell it at 25%, and you don't have to sell all of your free credits, right? You guys know how to play the game. You're learning it. And you come up with your own strategy on if you want to sell at all or if you just want to sell a portion or if you want to sell all your credits. The system is free to allow you to do all those things and every, dog, and every one of them works. OK. So in this case, you would get one hundred seventeen dollars that yields you a net profit of seventeen dollars. OK, so notice the difference here by dropping the earnings percentage from 15 percent to 8 percent. This doesn't necessarily put a burden on people that want to sell in the marketplace. This just causes you to engage a little bit more deposit and fees into the system. And this, again, redirects us back to the deposit fees. If 92 percent of the vaults uh, assets or earnings come from deposit fees, we have to focus on increasing every aspect of the vault because that is what pays out the conversions in Bitcoin. OK, now, so for this same user, I'll get to the ratio a little bit later, but for this same user to now generate the amount of net profits that they had with this strategy here at 15 percent, 
guess what they are going to have to do? They're going to have to more than double. They're going to have to like quadruple their deposit. If we put in $2,000 here, and this is at the 8% now, if they put in $2,000, right, what does that show us? In order to get to that net profit for the same investment, they would essentially have to put in a $4,000 deposit, right? And that gets you closer to what you were doing at a $1,000 deposit. So I don't know how much you guys that sell actually deposit. It might be a thousand, might be 10,000, might be 500, but this kind of gives you an idea with some stable numbers to see what happens. All right. Now let's notice what happens. If I was to come in, I used to put in a thousand dollars, every transaction, I cash out $62 and 50 cents. And then I take that out the system and then I put another thousand dollars back in. All right. Now, if I want to be a, an active seller in the marketplace, now I have to increase my deposit. Not a problem because I can now put in 4,000. I can still walk away with that same amount, but there's been significant benefit to the system. And what is that? The deposit fees have quadrupled, right? So we are now increasing those deposit fees and even though I paid a $400 fee for that deposit, if I was to still sell all of my credits at a 25% discount, that means I would walk away with an earnings of 468% and still have net profits of $68. Okay, you guys understand where we're going with this? All right, the thing is, you just have to have that amount of capital to put in. Put in $4,000, pay that $4,000. $400 fee and take out 3,600 wait on that to cash out and then do it again right so that's how this game can be played or you can just take that thousand dollars and do it four times now my option would be to put in more pay more for a little bit take out more and still benefit all right so again this leads to respecting the credits because as the amount of credits that are issued decreases, that's just going to bring a greater demand for the credits and for buyers to get them at a discount. Right. Respect the credit. Respect the credit. All right. If you guys got any questions thus far, take a break, pause the video, leave questions in the comments. All right. Let's go down to the balance to obligations ratio. And I'm going to refer back to this up here because these numbers are somewhat significant. So let's come down and unhide this information because this is some information that you guys may want to be aware of. All right, so if we notice here, when we dropped the site and it was paying a 15% earnings on your deposits, any amount that you send in Whatever the deposit is, it can be a thousand dollars. It could be a hundred dollars. That ratio is going to remain the same. OK, based on the amount of credits that are issued at that percentage. OK, when we choose to decrease this, the ratio increases. And one thing that we want, guys, is for the ratio, the balance the vault balance to the obligations ratio to increase, either remain the same or preferably increase. Because as this rate increases, that speaks of the stability of the system to support itself based on the existing transaction activity, volume and user engagement. OK, so this is a healthy thing. The greater this ratio is, the better. OK. So we see by default at a 15 percent earnings percentage, any deposit that comes in initially will trigger an update of 40 percent to the system. However, we have to consider that's not just one. We have hundreds and potentially thousands of transactions coming in. OK, so this number here is going to be somewhat affected. It helps, but it will change over the course of time, because also consider these 
are being these credits are being converted into Bitcoin. Now, let's look at these numbers here, because for the month of March, on average, this percentage, the balance to obligations ratio has stabilized at about 17 percent, which is not bad because a capital injection is not really needed until we reach 1% technically, but we want to ensure that it doesn't get that low because again, keep in mind, the rate at which current uh, credits are converted into Bitcoin is based on this amount, what this ratio is. The higher this is, the faster the system pays out. The lower this is, the slower the system pays out. So when it gets to a 10%, ratio, there will be a capital injection that happens to help boost that. Okay. Where does this capital injection come from? Well, first and foremost, it comes from the dev wallet, right? So the fees that are going into the dev wallet are used first and foremost as a reserve, right? So should capital injection be needed, it will go to that source first. Beyond that, if the depletes all of those resources, then there are angel investors that are backing the system that are uh, able and willing to support any additional capital that needs to be injected to main, make sure this system continues on forward. And it's my job as the developer to ensure that the system works stably. The whole concept is sustainability. And once we get this project to a point where it is self-sustaining based on the activity, we never have to worry about any capital injections. We never have to worry about uh, the system not paying out because it's always assessing the performance of the system, which, like I say, talked about in that Medium article, that auto evaluation mechanism. OK, but anyway. We see that the average percentage as of now has dropped to 17 percent and has stabilized around this percentage. OK, and some of you guys might be like, well, OK, well, it didn't drop to 10 percent. So can we just leave it at that? Well, no, we can't, because there is another aspect we have to consider, and that is the management of the obligations. OK, so as obligations continue to increase. At a 15 percent payout, the higher those obligations get, the more activity is required in order to maintain those obligations or pay out those obligations. Right. And we're going to use a quick example here. So let me unhide this. All right. So let's say that we the system is generating uh, in fees is generating about a thousand dollars a day. OK. And as of today, the existing obligations are two thousand five hundred dollars. So any thousand dollar injection will impact that percentage by about 40 percent. OK, that's cool. But we're going to copy and paste this. And let's say the existing obligations, because every time a transaction comes in, a deposit comes in, the system is issuing more credits. So this number continues to increase with each deposit. All right. So let's say that increases now to 10,000. All right. That's 1,000. I meant 10,000. All right. So at 10,000, we see that the impact from that same activity in a day is lower. Okay. So the impact that the same thousand dollars would have had in this day on a higher obligation is 10 percent as opposed to 40 percent. And this 10 percent impact will actually put allow this balance to obligations ratio to continue to decrease. Now, based on this month, we see that the engagement and the earnings per day are increasing, which is a good thing, right? So it might be two thousand dollars today. Why do I keep missing my zero? It might be two thousand dollars today. And we see how that impact is. 
But the key point with this, guys, is that I need you to notice that in order to really have an impact on the obligations, which affects the balance to obligations ratio, we have to continue to increase more and more and more as far as the earnings per day. And that is not something that I want to require of the system. I don't want it to be like a DGN play or D, you know, drip network and elephant money and all these other type of systems that just keep requiring you to feed in money. That's not what this system is about. It's about sustainability. OK, so. And it's, it's about yielding profits for us all. Right. So with this understanding. This should give you a better idea of why we want to increase this average percentage and we can't just leave it here and expect 100 percent growth each day, every day. OK, there are going to be some slow days. There might be some slow months in the future. The system will adapt to that using that one percent change every 30 days or so. However, this change is being made right now to such a degree that it will benefit the system and put it in a closer position to be self-sustaining and sustainable for a long period of time. All right. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Guys, you will still be able to benefit when you see that 15 to 8 percent drop. That's not a big deal. And, and you see that it actually will help out the system and everybody that is a participant of it. It teaches us to respect these credits, to get in there, to respect the system. We definitely already respect Bitcoin and this thing will continue to churn out yields like crazy. And in the future, once it reaches a point of stability, let me go come back here. Also notice that just like when the uh, average percentage is, is stabilized at 17 percent, if it drops to 10 percent, there's a capital injection. And if it increases to 105 percent, meaning, hey, there's more money in the vault than the obligations, then it's going to instantly trigger an increase. All right. And so it would go essentially from 15% or 8% to 9%, right? But it would do so in a healthier state because its obligations are manageable, completely manageable by the system and by you guys' engagement and activity within the system. And it will pay out yields that much faster. Now, this is a, a more difficult task to reach because in the process of reaching this 105 percent, keep in mind that as the average percentage increases, the rate of payout, meaning converting from credits to Bitcoin, increases as well. So all you guys that are sitting holding credits, you're going to notice a faster pace of those credits converting into Bitcoin. So everyone, again, everyone in the system benefits. And I hope you guys will be able to see through this example, how it will benefit even more by dropping the current earnings from 15 percent to 8 percent is open for discussion. You guys leave questions or comments in the comment section. And I think that covers everything for this video. We'll holler at you on the next one. Peace out.